Hey YouTube, I'm Time Itself. In this tutorial, I'm going to provide an introduction to using Virtual Studio Technology to improve the quality of your live streaming audio. Let's be honest, most of us gaming YouTubers or live streamers work on hobbyist budgets in far from ideal conditions for providing professional audio. And nonetheless, there's still a long way we can go with what we do have. And hopefully this tutorial is useful in helping you to uh, figure out how to do things a little better. Alright, first, here's an example I'm going to walk through and show you how I'm going to try to improve my live stream audio with both the game audio and the chat audio. Get moving. One more on it! But there's three more in the room. Now, if you were just going to use your live streaming program's volume slider inputs to try and clean that up, you'd be fairly limited, and it'd probably sound something like this. Get moving. One more on it! But there's three more in the room. But I want to firmly put that gameplay audio in the background. That explosion at the end is especially annoying, but I'd still like to be able to hear the announcer. Also, one of my friends is kind of loud, the other one's kind of quiet. I'd like to be able to hear them both fairly equally. Really what I want to do is reduce the dynamic range of both the chat and the gameplay. To do that, I'm going to use compression. So here's an extremely brief explanation of the basics of compression. To use some graphs, the input level is on the x-axis there, the output level is on the y-axis. Normally, the output is just the same as the input. You can turn the volume up or down, but as you heard, that has some limitations. What our typical gain reduction compressors do is as the input gets louder, they turn the output volume down further. Two parameters are used to describe this. The threshold, the point where the compression begins, and the ratio, how much to compress the audio once it's past the threshold. Higher ratios yield more compression. As this reduces the maximum volume we have, most compressors have the option to apply makeup gain and correct for that. For my gameplay and chat example, here's roughly what those curves are going to look like. The gameplay firmly in the background, but you can still hear it, while the chat is going to be very easy to hear all around, even when people are speaking quietly. Two more important compression parameters are attack and release. These are times. Attack is how long it takes the compressor to turn the volume down once it's past the threshold, and release is how long it takes the compressor to turn the volume back up once the volume is under the threshold again. These are typically given in milliseconds. The two things, as a gameplay commentator, that I find I have to worry about the most both deal with that attack time. Attack times that are too short can cause distortion, but attack times that are too long can cause a kind of popping effect, especially with gunfire and explosions. Those loud noises happen, and the compressor doesn't catch them because it's too slow. As I'm not really bothered by distorted gunfire or explosions, I go ahead and turn my attack times on my gameplay down to 10, if not 5, or even fewer milliseconds. That was an extremely short explanation of compression. There's way more information out there, lots of different settings and techniques. Go ahead and try stuff. Search Google, Wikipedia, learn how to do things, try stuff out, and see what you like, see what works for you. So here's what that same clip sounds like with just the gameplay audio compressed. One more on it. But there's three more in the room. Not bad. Now let's go ahead and compress the chat audio too. One more on it. But there's three more in the room. Good, but it's now very apparent that I've got some background noise on that chat audio, and I need to go ahead and remove that. So, finally, here we are. One more on it. But there's three more in the room. Of course, once you've gotten this far, there's plenty more you can do to try and get the audio to suit your taste. From equalizers to try and remove pops, or just strange effects. Whatever you can come up with. One more on it. But there's three more in the room. Alright, so how do we do this? Credit to Dry Roasted Lemon over at the OBS Project forums for posting a general outline and the list of programs that he used to make this work. This list uh, is either free or donationware, so you go ahead and try this first before you commit any money to it. First, you'll need a program to route the output of the audio effects program to your streaming program. Now, if you've got something like Virtual Audio Cable, that'll work. If you have Wirecast, which is free for YouTube partners, that will also work. But if you don't have any of those, VB Audio Cable is donationware and works for this. 
And next, we need a VST host to run our plugins that are going to apply effects to our audio. I'm just going to use VST host for this. It's not the most user-friendly program out there, but it will get the job done. And finally, we're going to need some VST plugins to actually run. I'm going to use Replugs from the Reaper website and Buzzmax and Buzzcomp if you'd like to try it out from the Buzzroom website. Then you probably want to make a folder for all of your VTS plugins. Uh, here's a typical location in program files. All right, so now we've got VST host open and we need to get things set up here. So we're going to set our plugin path to wherever we put all those plugins. You can come in here and here's your browse button. And then you'll hit OK and uh, it should scan the plugins, but if you need to rescan, here's the option to do that. Then it'll just run through and pick all of those up. Alright, next we need to start setting our devices. So first we're going to do gameplay. For me, that comes in on the line in, and then we're going to output to our virtual output. Uh, try to change sample rates as few times as possible. That's just going to depend on how your setup's going. Buffer time, uh, you get lots of options. Uh, lower buffers mean less audio delay, but they can also cause issues. Right now, this is working for me, so I'm just going to leave it alone. Okay, once we've got that, we need to double check our configuration. Yes, our input channel is the line in, and output is there. Okay, that looks good. So, first, we're just doing gameplay. Uh, we're going to come in and just add a basic compressor. And what we do here is we just add that, and then we link it to the engine input. You see, uh, it definitely is picking up the game that I've got going in the background. And then that, yeah, that's going to our compressor. This little icon here brings up the nice graphical panel. All pretty looking. Uh, you can also change the settings from the other one, but that's not nearly as nice. All right, so let's set up the compression for my gameplay audio. Again, I got a game going in the background right now, just so you can see what's going on. And we'll set the threshold first. That's probably good. And our attack time, yeah, that, that needs to be pretty low. And release, so that's that's probably okay. Our ratio, well, I'm gonna start with about eight for my for my gameplay, and maybe even a little little of that. Uh, this stuff's fine. Now, in terms of how loud it actually is, I think the easiest way to actually keep track of this is to turn the auto makeup on and then turn the output. Wet is the result of your FX processing. Dry is nothing happening so for this purpose dry is all the way off and then we'll just turn the output results down using this to yeah, somewhere in the negative 17 range and you can see the compressor acting here and the the output as it comes in here that's that's looking good go ahead and close that and then the output will take we'll take the, the output will take the uh, result of my compressor link those up and there we go we have the compressor outputting from the input to the result yeah there we go that looks great okay next I'm gonna save that I'm gonna make sure that auto save plugins banks is checked but if this isn't checked it will not save all of these settings and you'll lose them every time you're it yeah no good <laughs> so make sure you have that checked and then we'll come in here and save as so I again we'll just overwrite and we'll say gameplay example. And we can save that and we come back to it. Uh, though the one issue is that the devices may get changed. So uh, if I was going to do a live stream, I would leave this up and open another copy of VST host and then have multiple instances running. That's just been the most, it's the simplest way for me to get things working. I think it's the only way I've been able to get things working right now. But for this example, I am just going to select another pre, uh, performance set that I have. All right, now we're going to set up for our chat audio, and there's all sorts of nasty stuff going on here. I'm going to have to do a bunch of stuff to try to remove noise, but first we need to select our device. And for me, the mic in at rear panel is the chat coming from both myself and my team. I had another video up about this. We're going to do that, and you can see now this is responding to my voice. And we can double check here that yes, this is this is right. All right, normally I use uh, something that's built in with my sound card to do some noise removal, but if you don't have that option, uh, this is one way you can go about, go about try to remove some of that additional noise. You can come in here to the reefer, 
uh, it's an equalizer plugin, and we'll connect that to the input. And we'll pull this up, and there you can go. You can see me talking, but there's also obviously quite a lot of noise in the background. What I'm going to do is set this to subtract mode, and then let it build a noise profile for my room with all these noisy things going on, my Xbox and <laughs> all the fans and whatnot going. So one second, and then I'll turn that off. All right, so there's roughly a noise profile for my room, and that will remove that. It's not great, but it's certainly better than nothing. The more noise you have, the worse it's going to be. There's really no way around it. But we've got that out of the way. Now, uh, what I will normally use, if you use any combination of these you think is appropriate, experiment, see what works for you, is I'm going to set up a gate. And this will, uh, this will trigger once there's enough, once it's loud enough, this will trigger and start letting audio through, and then once it gets quiet again, it'll cut off. So that keeps the quiet hiss of things out of the way. So let's pull that up. All right, I'm going to be quiet again and see where uh, this gate noise, gate needs to be set. All right, so now it will cut everything off that's below this, and when I start speaking again, it will let my voice through. You've got an option of pre-open here if you want it, uh, though it will add some delay. Attack time, maybe this is just a gate, so attack should be very short. Uh, hold, if you'd like that, I think it's probably useful. <laughs> Speech being broken up uh, by the gate turning on and off gets really annoying. Uh, release time, obviously, and then the hysteresis is the difference between when the gate triggers to let sound, when it to open, and when the gate triggers to close. So if I, this is also useful if the gate is opening and closing a lot, you can come in here and tell it not to close until uh, it's another negative 1.8 decibels below where this uh, open trigger was set. It can be useful. And if we wanted to play with the output here, we could. Uh, in fact, I might turn it down just a little bit. Uh, again, preferences. Uh, that's fine. All right, that will be good for our gate. Next, we're going to go in and add a compressor. And again, we're going to link that to our gate. And then go ahead and look at its settings. All right, and this... I, I would normally compress my own audio, maybe somewhat more carefully, somewhat differently, but I knew it was only myself coming through on this line, but I know it's everybody who's in my Xbox Live party, so I'm going to have to be, I'm going to have to be somewhat aggressive about this. So I'm going to start off with uh, Threshold, and then uh, Attack, Release, and Ratio. I'm going to have to be, again, fairly aggressive about this. Actually, I, I did something wrong. I'm going to come back to my I did not want to set that, turn that down at all. That was a that was a mistake. All right, but I will turn this one down a little bit. These things look too much alike sometimes. All right. My, yeah, whatever. Experiment, see what works. You see the compressor acting a little bit when I'm just speaking normally. The mic's a little bit further away from my face than it would be. I'm recording a commentary too, and we're gonna apply auto makeup. Yeah, there we go. Okay. And that'll be good. Finally, uh, if I hadn't turned that down, or if I just want to play with other stuff, I can come in here and add a limiter. And this will keep it from going over a certain point. Certain point. Uh, what can become an issue is when you're yelling loud and there's loud game sounds. Sometimes it will max out the audio, and you'll get some really nasty clipping. So uh, you can try to avoid that. So here is the Buzzmax plugin we downloaded. And we're just going to turn the output ceiling down a little bit, not too far. And finally, we'll connect that to the output. And there we go. That is ready to go into our live streaming program. Again, we're going to remember to save this. So, whatever you want. Finally, it's time to set this up with my live streaming program. In this case, I'm using OBS, but XSplit is quite similar. I'm going to set my microphone input to wherever the output of VTS host was sending things, and then that will let me use the mic time offset. Uh, this is something you have to play with, mostly because that MME setting that we were bringing in things to VTS host from has some delay on it. 
And now the number of samples we chose in the VTS host program when we were selecting inputs and outputs does have an effect. Uh, the, just the time would be the number of samples divided by your sample rate times a thousand would give you the milliseconds. But for example, in my case, I had like 22 milliseconds of delay because of the sampling. But MME was adding even more. It was the more significant one. And I just had to experiment to figure out what worked. And finally, that means that in my streaming program, I will have my microphone on, but my desktop audio off because I'm doing all my audio processing on my own and sending it all in through that auxiliary microphone input. And that concludes this tutorial. I sincerely hope that it is useful in improving the quality of your live streaming audio. And I look forward to seeing and hearing some better quality live streams out there. I think I'll do another short streaming tutorial on music, dealing with showing the information and automated ducking so that it gets quiet when you start talking. Look forward to that. Anyway guys, thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you later.